Hello and welcome to Edison TV. I'm Dan Ridsdale and today I'm joined by Matt Barry, Chief Executive Officer of Freelancer. Matt, many thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me. Can you start by giving us a brief introduction to Freelancer and the different operations that you have? Freelancer Limited is a, um, a global marketplace for services. We consist of a few companies in the group and we're trying to build the Amazon of services. Um, well, the, probably the largest company and most recognized company in the group is freelancer.com, where we have uh, almost 80 million users from around the world uh, working online. It's a marketplace for jobs, and you can get anything you possibly think of done uh, very quickly, efficiently, and at a very low cost. Um, we also own escrow.com, which is a global um, online escrow company that's for large and complicated payments. We're the largest and oldest uh, online uh, escrow company in the world, and we power everything from the sale and the purchase of things like um, boats, cars, aeroplanes, jewelry, gemstones, diamonds, uh, import, export, uh, you name it. Um, a whole range of different assets uh, and businesses can be bought and sold through, uh, through escrow. And we also own Loadshift, which is a heavy haulage freight company. Uh, and we did, we've done about 800 million kilometers of freight to date uh, through that business. Uh, and midweek, uh, some days we do over 400,000 kilometers of freight per day, which is more than the earth to the moon. So we're in the fields of labor payments, and uh, freight, and that all is under the one company, uh, uh, Freelancer Limited, uh, which is listed in the ASX. Very interesting. And you've got very interesting exposure to artificial intelligence in that um, you're using it a lot to enhance the experience for um, the people putting uh, business through your platform, but equally um, your freelancers are using artificial intelligence um, to, to conduct their work. Can you talk about the, the, the different dynamics on in terms of how artificial intelligence is being used and how it's impacting your business? Well, the France community of 80 million is probably one of the largest communities in the world for using AI. Uh, they're all over it across every uh, skill area you can possibly think of. Uh, AI tooling is evolving at a very rapid rate. Every single possible field um, of human endeavor uh, working online now has AI tooling uh, to basically turbocharge uh, you get your job done. And what we're seeing is it's a massive productivity lift and uh, it's really lifted the skills except, you know, to an exceptional level on the platform. If you were an average copywriter before, you are now an exceptional copywriter with GPT and with Claude and all the other tools that are out there. If you were an average illustrator before, you are now an exceptional illustrator with the likes of Midjourney and so forth. And now we're seeing that across software development and you know, product design and every possible field of human endeavor that done on a computer, uh, you're seeing AI tooling. So what that's done is really lift the skills dramatically across the marketplace. And that's resulted in clients getting much higher quality work delivered uh, at a lower cost, at a faster rate. It's also increased the sophistication, the complexity uh, of the work uh, you can get done on the platform as well. Um, so you don't really have to break it down to micro tasks anymore. Uh, and, and, and this has really continued a long-term trend we've seen in terms of the sophistication and complexity of jobs you can get done on Freelancer as technology has, has, has got better over time. In terms of taking jobs, well, um, I don't know of anyone uh, to date that's lost their job thanks to Midjourney, and I really can only think of a very few number of people that have had their jobs threatened so far by, by, by ChatGPT. There will certainly be dislocation um, in, in some certain uh, job areas uh, thanks to this AI tooling. So for example, I, th I think the first place you will really see that is going to be in call centers, um, uh, where you've got thousands of people employed just doing customer support and answering phones. But what we've seen uh, so far is, you know, at least for example, in our support center, where we've, we've got staff running 24 seven by 365 in about 20 languages, is it's actually created more employment because what's actually happened is our customer support agents are the ones now writing the prompts for the AI agents to do customer support. Um, they're the ones that are, that are managing those uh, agents. They're coming up with, with a whole bunch of roles that were not uh, possible to do before uh, because they were not economically viable. So for example, uh, if you joined Freelancer, I mean, we get about 25,000 or so plus signups per day. It would never have been economically viable to have someone there to chaperone a new freelancer, perhaps say from, from Indonesia, uh, around the platform, show the features off, give them a good good um, exposure to kind of what we do on the platform and really help them get going. It, that just would never have been economically viable. Uh, but now with AI agents, uh, that is actually uh, economically viable. So there's a whole range of other um, um, effectively roles that we're creating as a result of that. 
Um, there's the, the whole uh, customer support team is now AI powered and have turned into AI prompt engineers. And I have whole teams now uh, in software engineering working on delivering AI features and, and working on the AI agent framework we have. So at least from our experience so far, uh, we're actually seeing more job creation than destruction, which is really the, the long-term trend that you see in the technology industry. Uh, but there's certainly gonna be changes. And I think a lot of job functions are gonna move up the stack. And that's, that's actually amazing in terms of what you can get done on the Freelancer platform. Um, if you're a designer, over time, you're going to evolve to be more of a creative producer um, because um, you won't be spending so much time pushing pixels around the screen as a freelancer. You'll instead be trying to, to do higher order, higher value work. Um, you know, if you're a copywriter in the past, you'll be now more of an editor because you know, you'll have the tooling to help you kind of produce copy quite quickly, but you still need that editor and else to figure out actually what to publish and so forth. And you know, if you're a programmer, uh, what we're about to see is you'll be more of a product manager. So instead of you know, um, uh, you know, on the keyboard uh, writing you know, potentially Python code, uh, you might act more of a product manager in terms of doing product design and, and really talking about the architecture of, of what you want to build as, you know, to, to the software as opposed to directly typing in um, you know, the code itself. So the, what that means on the flip side is it means you can get higher quality, higher sophisticated work done. And in fact, one of the exciting things that's going to happen this year on the platform, uh, which we're well underway with, is you better come to the platform and rather say, than saying, I want to build a website or I want to build an app, you better say, I want to start a business. And you know, we'll be able to interpret that. We'll be able to set up a whole bunch of different initiatives on the platform in order to turn that dream into reality and make it real um, uh, in terms of building product, building services, building a customer support teams, you know, doing marketing launches, marketing campaigns, and really building the whole sort of soup to nuts of, 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 of your business idea or the enhancement to your existing business. So, so really it's a, a, enabling a whole range of you know, higher value, more complex, uh, more detailed, more sophisticated service delivery over the internet, which we're pretty excited about. Freelancer is also partnering, partnering with large scale um, AI model providers, foundational model companies, uh, helping them train those models and sometimes um, working on things like niche dialects and so on. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure, certainly. We're working with quite a number of uh, the large foundational uh, models uh, to help them with their training. Um, so, you know, the big, the big breakthrough that's happened uh, in AI really since the invention of the transformer from Google is the ability for these um, artificial intelligence models to consume large amounts of data in their training. And um, as the amount of data provided um, uh, gets larger, not get lost in the training and be able to do the training in, in a, in a par paralyzed sort of way uh, to make sure that they're, they're, they're quite efficient. The AI model is actually improving in a, in, a, in, a, in kind of a super linear way. And so what that means is um, if you feed in the amount of data into the model, you'll get, um, and you train it, you'll get a certain outcome. But if you step up that data by an order of magnitude, so order of 10, um, you know, the, the model gets better in order of 10, the model gets better and better and better and better. And that's why you're seeing, you know, from ChatGPT to GPT-4, to you know the 10 model etc and so forth and and, and likewise with with um, um, the graphic design packages like stable diffusion and mid journey you're seeing you know images evolve from being very abstract and very basic to uh, picasso like and then ultimately to you know high fidelity photo realism and now we're hitting the stream streaming video and so forth that's all been enabled through uh, primarily through the step up um, in terms of the data that's gone into the training now to get that data that you need, you need, you need basically um, to get access to data sets. Uh, and um, there's a layer that the foundational models use uh, to improve that training uh, called reinforcement learning for human feedback. And that, what that is basically is, is humans will look at um, AI output and maybe the AI will output um, you know, two or four different variations of what it could respond to, to a prompt. And humans will select you know, which are the best four or, or the best two and so we are doing uh, several things with the foundational models. One thing is we're providing training, you know, raw training data into those models. We can uniquely do that because we've got the largest online workforce in the world. So we've got 80 million people around the world. So if you want to get someone to help you, um, someone to, to write um, uh, you know, a corpus of text um, to help you train in, say, Hungarian, uh, we have Hungarian freelancers can do that. Furthermore, because we've got 80 million people, uh, we have a variety of skill sets that are highly specialized across a whole bunch of niche areas. So maybe you need uh, people who are mathematics experts who speak Hungarian. Maybe you need biology experts. Uh, maybe you need um, geology experts, et cetera, and so forth. We have all of them, and we're also we're supplying uh, training data to the, financial, uh, to the foundational models 
um, you know, through our, our users at scale. So if you go on the site and you check out some of the groups, for example, you know, we, you know, we, can, we can marshal per day you know, upwards of you know, 20,000 freelancers a day uh, for, a, for a specific task uh, quite successfully and, and put them through qualification and get them ready in a, in a, in a, in a talent network uh, working uh, on an ongoing basis. Um, with RLHF training, um, you know, we basically have freelancers there looking at data coming out of these large foundational models through the training and kind of you know, maybe there's a couple of different um, results that the AI could come out with and they're selecting the best one. Now, it's more than just selecting it for factuality and for um, human readability and so forth. There's also nuances in terms of how things read in various languages, uh, various dialects, but also down to um, the geographic area. You know, one of the shortcomings with the training of the open AI model has been that um, they they didn't do this in the in the original training. So, for example, um, uh, you know, OpenAI's ChatGPT will often use language such as "Let's delve into this," uh, and that word "delve" is not commonly used, for example, in U.S. English, but it is, it is extremely common in Nigerian, and that's where uh, a number of the freelancers uh, were used in the original training of the OpenAI model um, to 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 basically do the RLH, RLHF training. With with our user base, you can not just select um, a certain language, but you can select a certain geographic location that you want uh, those particular freelancers to be from in order to do the RLHF uh, training. And also you can select certain skill sets and, and, and so forth. So we have you know, quite a number of things we're doing with, with, with the foundational models. We're also uh, f uh, being, being asked to find very, very niche um, attributes. So for example, it might be people with beards or with you know, glasses or um, you know, have, an, you know, have experience with dirt bikes and so forth. And a lot of that sort of expertise as well is being used in the, in the training of these models for various uh, niche applications. Uh, in addition, um, our freelancers are being used uh, because we have them everywhere through our global fleet program um, to go to certain locations to generate training data uh, in other modalities. So in addition to what I've talked about before with, with written text, um, we're getting people in certain locations to provide audio um, uh, for training, certain dialects and certain geographic regions for certain languages, but also to go to certain locations and take photographs or take videos or fill in little surveys, uh, again, for training data. So they might need to go to you know, 300,000 um, points of interest in a month. Um, uh, and so we've got free answers at scale running around, you know, taking photographs or taking videos and so forth. So uh, we're also seeing a pipeline of, of more and more sophisticated things these financial models are doing. Uh, and you know, we think we, we're going to be a player, you know, continue to play an, an ever increasingly large part uh, in the training of these foundational models. Um, uh, uh, because at the end of the day, you need to have, you know, you, you, it's sort of a garbage in, garbage out. You need to have really um, high quality uh, human uh, uh, generated data in order to train a bunch of these models. Uh, and uh, a lot of the techniques that have been done using uh, synthetic data is a bit like the snake in its tail uh, and, and, it, and it causes some, some corruption problems over, over time. So I think we've got a pretty unique capability there and we're delivering at scale and we continue to work with more and more partners and we're pretty excited about what this year has uh, to hold for us as we automate that process and make it easier and easier uh, to access talent at scale. And turning through to the, the work that's going through your platform now, can you talk about the, the, the types of work using artificial intelligence that's, that's going through the platform and give, the, give us some examples of the, of, of the most use, used um, projects that are going through that, that are using artificial intelligence? People are building AI agents to do all sorts of stuff. I saw someone actually this morning building an AI-powered AI stock trading platform uh, that's taking in a whole bunch of research uh, that it's generating. Uh, the latest version of, of ChatGPT has got um, the O1 model, which allows you to kind of do deep research. You can kind of say, put in a query and tell it to go off and find all the links on the internet and, and source data and, and put together a little research report. So someone's doing that uh, to, to basically power their stock trading engine. But the other big thing that people are using it for is, is really intense personalization. So no matter what um, your business does, um, you can always deliver a better, a better um, and more personalized experience um, uh, and, and, and people are doing that, you know, taking kind of, you know, their, their, their existing sort of websites or existing apps, and they're using AI to help users really get through the customer journey and the customer funnel through um, helping, uh, you know, provide more detail uh, as they go through. It's opening up uh, a whole bunch of new job areas. Uh, we're also seeing freelancers jump, um, jump between different categories now more easily. So you're seeing um, designers now who are using AI uh, to build websites and build apps and write code. 
and, and, and vice versa. You're seeing programmers who are using AI to basically deliver um, you know, fully fledged businesses uh, you know, with all design work and all copy written and so forth. And you talked about how artificial intelligence can improve the work uh, that the freelancers are, are implementing and also how um, the freelancers are expanding their skill set. Um, but how do you see the overall value of the average job going through the platform, given uh, given the expansion in range, but also the the increased efficiency that, um, that 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 you can get out of the platform through using artificial intelligence? It's a great question. Look, we are an incredibly deflationary platform. Um, you know, NASA's uh, been using us since uh, twenty fifteen. And in fact, I think there's about 15,000 freelancers have participated working for NASA in various form factors, uh, supplying um, you know, uh, product design work. Um, uh, what they've done in that paper is they've looked at their usage of freelancers over the years. And what they've discovered is um, a, a, a drop in between 80 and 99% in terms of the cost of getting services delivered. And there's not many businesses in the world which, which can deliver a 99% drop in, uh, in service being delivered. Um, it depends what skill area you're in and, and, and whether it's skilled or unskilled or what have you. But it's an incredibly def deflationary force. But, but the flip side of that is it becomes easier and more economic for more businesses to get things done. So, you know, uh, Amazon comes into the country um, and, and you're, you're a shoe store selling shoes. Uh, you know, you need to compete against Amazon. How are you going to do that? In the past, it was very, very tough because they had all the economies of scale. Uh, now, using freelancer, a shoe store can afford a programmer to you know, basically build a website, maybe that's interactive, that's got some cool features that's, that really differentiates them from Amazon. It can, it, they can hire marketing people to assist them. They can hire uh, designers. Um, they can hire admin staff, virtual assistants, and so forth. So because we are so deflationary uh, in, terms of, in, to the, in terms of the costings, uh, you know, it, it really opens up new markets and enables new things to be done. And AI is really the next step there. So, you know, it's all about delivering you know, services faster, higher quality for cheaper. So certainly um, uh, on, on one front, you will see um, for certain specific tasks, you'll see, um, you know, the ability to get that done cheaper, uh, which will be incredibly deflationary. But the flip side is more complex and sophisticated things can be done for the same dollar value. So, you know, as I said before, uh, one of the exciting things we're going to do this year is uh, you will be able to come to freelance and say, oh, I want to build a business. And, you know, for a, for, a, for a small budget, you'll be able to get all things done to go online and have a presence and actually go out there and or build a product or a service or whatever it may be, because you can get things manufactured through freelancer and, and get it out there. So, you know, we are going to see uh, individual tasks get cheaper to deliver. Uh, but, but for the same budget you had before in terms of building your product and service, you better get a lot more done. So we think overall the volume is going to go up. And, 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 uh, and you know, it's been one of the drivers, again, uh, you know, in terms of the customer acquisition side of, of the business, in terms of the financial metrics over the last 12 months. So um, we, we expect that to continue. So for us, we're trying to just open up the market as much as possible um, and, and get as much done. And ultimately, if we can help build, people build long-term enduring businesses and products and services which have affinity of the market and are successful and get launched, um, you know, that's, that's, that's our goal. I think in the future, you know, every business in the world will have a, a virtual workforce and a, a, a local workforce. Uh, there, are, there, are, um, there are pros and cons of both. Um, so I don't think, um, you, know, they'll, you know, one or the other is, is, is the perfect solution. It really depends on your, on, your, on your needs and what you're doing. Some people have completely virtual businesses. Some people need some physical people for, for various reasons uh, and, and so forth. Uh, but it's all about, uh, you know, any way you want to work, you can do on freelancer. Uh, you can work with people fixed price. You can work with people hourly. You can work with teams. You can work with people anywhere in the world, any skill set, what have you. Uh, we have a whole uh, catalog now of services that, that are being offered and, 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 and various shop fronts. And so, it's, it's so you know, I, I really think it's all about driving the, the volume of work overall. And I think that will happen as, as we open up the market, you know, just like FedEx did with, with, with low cost delivery. You know, you, you open up new markets as you kind of as you kind of um, make it more efficient to do things. Lots of things in the pipe, pipeline. Lots of things to to look forward to. I have to say, I find this combination of the efficiency gains and the enhancement of using these new artificial intelligence tools, together with the access to a global um, expert uh, freelancer base, um, hugely interesting, Matt. Many thanks for joining me today. Thanks, Dan.